Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video, this time about managing Kubernetes clusters with Azure Arc. Uh, now to briefly talk about what Azure Arc is, well, if you know Azure Resource Manager, which is the, the, the system that is used to manage Azure resources in the cloud, Azure Arc uh, allows you to extend on-premises or resources in other clouds uh, into that uh, Azure Resource Manager environment. What does that mean? It means that, for example, you can install Azure Arc agents on servers or on Kubernetes or can use databases um, as well. And you project those resources into the Azure cloud and manage them from there. Now, we are not going to discuss Azure Arc for servers or Azure Arc for databases. We are going to focus on Azure Arc for Kubernetes. So what this does is relatively simple um, when you have kubernetes clusters running on premises or in other cloud environments you install some components on them that connect them to the azure cloud to the azure resource manager model and once they're connected you'll see an object in the azure portal representing that cluster on a second level you can install some additional software on that uh, on that cluster to manage using GitOps techniques to manage your Kubernetes clusters. So for instance, if you have, let's say, a Kubernetes cluster deployment on the edge and you have several Kubernetes clusters deployed in edge locations uh, with just one configuration in a Git repository, you can make sure you install all the uh, necessary software on those clusters. And surprise, surprise, Azure is using Flux for that. And we'll see in a moment how that works. Now, in this case, I'm going to just show you how you can work with a, with a local cluster. For that, I'm using Kind, which is Kubernetes in Docker. Now, there's another video on my channel which has to do with um, Windows services or Windows uh, subsystem for Linux version 2. And uh, in that video, I explain all the components I use to do development and, and, and Kubernetes tests within that environment. I'm using that same environment here. So you can see here, I have Visual Studio Code started. I actually started Visual Studio Code from within my Windows subsystem for Linux version 2. So on the May 2020 release of Windows 10, uh, running an Ubuntu uh, Linux version. And I installed several extensions within uh, Visual Studio Code. One of these extensions is the Kind extension. And Kind, as I said, Kubernetes in Docker, allows me to deploy a test Kubernetes cluster, and it's using Docker uh, to run Kubernetes. You will see that clearly, because I also installed the Docker component, um, or Docker is available within my Windows uh, subsystem for Linux. And um, in a moment, when everything uh, has, has been given enough time, um, you can see here that indeed this kind uh, component or this kind container has started and it's using this image to work off. We give that some time, eh? it's creating the kind cluster. What happens here as well is I also installed the uh, Kubernetes extension for Visual Studio Code. When you create a kind cluster, the cluster will automatically appear as well as one of the Kubernetes clusters uh, that's available via your kube config. So you see here, kind, kind, that's a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and as you would expect, namespaces, workloads, networking, and so on. So this one we're going to use to actually connect up to the Azure portal. Let's see how that works. Now, uh, luckily, I have a little bit of a script for that. Um, here in this uh, commands.shell um, uh, file. And by the way, these will all be up on, uh, on the GitHub uh, repository that's mentioned in the, in the comments or in the notes for this video. Be aware that I'm recording this uh, using the private preview of Azure Arc for Kubernetes a week before the public preview is released during the build conference. If things have changed in the meantime, I will uh, report that also in the uh, description of the video. 
Now, for all of this to work, you have to make sure that several feature flags are registered within your subscription and also that you have registered the correct providers in your subscription. Yeah, I am already logged in to a subscription using the Azure CLI. You will need that. So the Azure CLI needs to be installed and you will have to uh, you will be have to be logged in into the correct subscription via the as a login command. Yeah, because we will install the components interactively. So the Azure CLI connection is also used for that. Now I already registered these features and we can double check this to see if they are indeed there. So let's run this command and check if the feature flags are registered. And indeed they are. Then you have to register providers. These two providers have to be registered in the subscription. Well, I'm going to check out if these both providers are indeed registered. Let's do that. And what I see here is the two commands are run. I see that the Microsoft Kubernetes um, 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 provider indeed has been registered and the Microsoft Kubernetes configuration has been registered as well. So we're, we're, uh, we're set on that level. What you also have to make sure of is that you have installed uh, some Azure CLI extensions. Yeah, Kubernetes is a first class citizen for the Azure CLI. You should really use Azure CLI for your Kubernetes management. And in this case, yeah, we need to extend the Azure CLI with a couple of new um, um, capabilities. We do that by adding an extension. I already did that. Yeah, You do have to make sure that if you maybe already played with this in the past, maybe you have, I don't know, uh, make sure you always update your Azure CLI as well, especially during the public preview. Also update the extensions to make sure you're using the latest and greatest improvements. Um, let's check if we have these extensions installed as extension list table. And indeed we have version 0.1.7 and 0.1.5 of these components installed. Great. That's it. Now we just have to connect this cluster to our uh, Azure resource manager environment. We are going to create a resource group in this case in West Europe. Let's create that uh, group. There we go. And then, and this is the command you need to use eh, from that additional um, uh, Azure CLI uh, extension that was installed. We need to now register this cluster, the kind cluster, eh, the kind cluster as a connected Kubernetes cluster um, in Azure. We need to specify the name of the Azure resource. So an Azure resource called ArcKind will be created in the resource group that we just created. Let's just do that and let's see what happens. Now, this is a, let's say a longer running uh, command. Why? Uh, because it needs to install components in our cluster, in the kind cluster. If we go to the namespaces of our cluster and I refresh the namespaces, we should see yeah, in a moment or two that Azure Arc, uh, an Azure Arc namespace will be added and several components that Azure Arc requires will need to be installed. Basically, that's an agent, let's just say it bluntly like that, that registers um, this cluster into the Azure cloud. It does a bit more than just that, but uh, to just make it uh, simple and easily understandable. Now. If I go to my um, Azure portal environment and we refresh our Kubernetes clusters, in a while you'll see here that this Kubernetes cluster will be listed. Yeah, So we give it a little bit of time uh, to see what happens there. Now maybe before I'm um, pausing this a bit and come back when the installation is done, please make sure that you installed Helm version 3 here. So Helm is indeed installed in my uh, subsystem for Linux. And if I'm doing a Helm uh, version, uh, I, I indeed see I have a version three installed, more specifically version 3.2.1. So Helm three is required. The uh, Azure CLI command that I showed you earlier, this command here, the connect command uses Helm in the background and it clearly states so and sure you have the latest helm version installed before proceeding now before we pause 
Let's check if the namespace is there. Indeed, the Azure Arc namespace is there, but it will take quite some time until this is all installed. See you in a moment when that is finished. Okay, the installation has completed. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, connect uh, command results in a couple of uh, lines of JSON that is output uh, to the screen. Um, and that tells me that uh, everything went according to plan. So I should now have a resource called ArcKind uh, in my Azure portal. Let's check that out and just refresh this information here. And there you can see there's a Kubernetes cluster, but the icon is a little bit different, indicating it's an Arc cluster. And you can also see that the type is of type Azure Arc. When you click on that, naturally, you will, will not have the same level of control and manageability as with a managed cluster like AKS. Uh, why? Well, of course, the system cannot know how to upgrade this cluster, how to add a node to this cluster and so on, because this could basically run in any environment, right? What you can do, we'll see in a, in a moment. So there's my, there's my resource. Uh, that's great. We have it uh, listed uh, there. If we check in our Azure Arc namespace, and we just use the namespace and we check the uh, deployments within that uh, namespace. So we go to workloads deployments. You see all, all kinds of deployments have been, uh, have been uh, created. Um, so the, the config agent, the flux logs agent, um, that's all used um, yeah, behind the scenes, so to speak, to make the, the arc uh, for Kubernetes uh, work the way it, it needs, to, uh, needs to work. So everything is installed uh, properly. We're just gonna go back to the default uh, namespace and, uh, and that's it. Great, now what can we do further? Um, well, what you can do here is GitOps configurations. So what you'll see in the portal, in the portal you can see that there's a configurations option. And there you can add a configuration. Uh, this configuration, when you uh, supply all the necessary details, and we'll see in a moment what that is, uh, actually just does a deployment of Flux. It deploys Flux either within a namespace or Flux as a cluster-wide component. So if you know a bit of Flux from past experience, or you look on my channel at some of the other uh, Flux-based uh, uh, videos, then you already know what you have to do here. Uh, now you can create this configuration here, and that will perfectly work, uh, but you can also create this configuration from the command line with the Azure CLI. So let's check out what you have to do for the Azure CLI. And I know that a command here, that's uh, another CLI extension, uh, that's the Kubernetes configuration extension, where we create a new uh, configuration. We call the configuration real-time config. It has to have a name. Uh, we have to specify what Azure resource to deploy that configuration to. That's the name of the resource in Azure, not the name of my cluster. It's arc kind is the name that we used earlier in resource group RG arc. We have to give the operator instance, so the Flux instance, a name as well. We give it a name real-time config. And we also tell him to install the operator in the namespace real time. Now that namespace does not exist yet in our Kubernetes cluster, but it will be created for you automatically if you specify it here. Naturally, it's Flux we're talking about, it's GitOps we're talking about, so we need to specify also the path to a Git repository. In this case, this is a public Git repo. You can just go to github.com slash gbake or g-b-a-e-k-e and the arc, uh, the arc um, repo contains all the information that we need. Now we also scope Flux to the namespace. If you know a little bit of Flux, you can scope it to the whole cluster where you can have multiple deployments of Flux, uh, each within their own namespace. In this case, we only allow Flux to uh, work within this real-time namespace. And the cluster type is important because this is a connected cluster. Uh, you can also do these GitOps configurations to managed clusters like AKS, for instance. It's perfectly supported. In this case, it's a connected cluster. It's an external cluster, in our case, a locally running cluster that we connect. And then the operator params, they are just specific to Flux. So again, if you know Flux a bit, you know you can specify a git path, and that means that Flux will look inside that folder within your repo for YAML files and not anywhere else. And I also specify my git user and my git email, uh, so I can use the read-write uh, capabilities of Flux as well. So this is the only thing that is needed. I can do that now from here, 
because I'm connected with the Azure CLI to my subscription. I just copy and paste this here and the configuration will be created for us. So it has done so. And of course, now it needs to kick off some work again. First of all, it does something in the cloud. It registers the configuration. Secondly, my cluster now needs to see this. So the agents on the cluster need to pick this up and then configure the Flux software within the namespace real time as we uh, configured in this uh, configuration command. Now, before we look at our cluster, uh, let's check out if the configuration was created. And indeed, the real-time config is here, but it's pending, still installing, configuring my cluster to make this uh, work. You can clearly see this because when we look at the configuration, you see here succeeded, but the message, the full message is, uh, is still uh, a null and cluster state is null. That just means we didn't, that the cluster wasn't configured yet properly for, uh, for uh, Flux. That will take yeah, a little bit of time uh, before that is, uh, is done, right? I'm going back to my uh, Visual Studio uh, code and maybe if we're lucky, if the thing is uh, fast enough, yeah, indeed there it is, the real-time namespace that I indicated here is created. When I go to that namespace, uh, you will clearly see that there are a couple of deployments there. The deployments are, if you know, again, Flux a little bit, memcached for storage, and then, yeah, the Flux operator was called real-time config. Eh? I specify that name over here. So real-time config is then matched to a deployment. When I check out uh, this deployment, it will run one pod, and it should only run one uh, pod. This is my uh, Flux operator. I need to give it a little bit of time uh, to turn uh, green. Uh, and from the moment it turns green, I can check out the logs and see what else do I need to do, or is everything running properly uh, as it should. Um, so let's check it out uh, again. It's still uh, still red. Uh, probably you're wondering what am I waiting for? Uh, will it will, will everything work uh, automatically? Well, of course it, it won't because Flux requires that I configure a SSH key. Well, in this case, that I configure an SSH key on my Git repository. Only then will Flux be able to connect to the Git uh, repo. And that's why I need to, uh, first of all, get that SSH key and then I can continue. So let's see uh, what uh, what it does in the, in the background here. It's green. Let's follow the logs because in the logs, I'm looking specifically for an issue. Um, and here I'm seeing, um, let's take a look. Yeah, here there's an issue. It says the Git repo is not ready. Uh, the Git repo has not been cloned yet. Uh, okay. What do I need to do in this case? Well, I can do a couple of things. First of all, I can just go to my script again. And in my uh, script, I can actually list the config. So list the configuration. When I list the configuration, there will be a little bit more detail about that configuration. Uh, one of the details that will be there is my SSH key. So, so Flux in this case generates an SSH key for me to configure my Git repo with. Now I can do it this way. I can just uh, use the list configs uh, command, or I can go to my uh, configuration over here, click on it, and I will also see the SSH key that I need. That's an important step that you need to follow. Uh, so I copy this, I go to my repository, and remember I specified that the repository contains a folder called config, and the config folder contains a YAML file, so what is in there should be deployed to my cluster. But it can't, because the SSH key is not configured as a deploy key on my Git repo. So let's go to deploy keys, let's go to uh, add a deploy key, let's call it arc whatever, it doesn't matter. I paste in uh, the key. I allow right access in this case, but I won't detail further what, what's the need for uh, right access. I confirm my uh, password. And now, normally, if I give Flux a little bit of time and I go back to the, the, the lock trace that I'm doing, uh, he should um, note, note in a moment that um, that uh, everything is, is working properly. So again, here he says refreshed. And now I'm seeing this here, sync, uh, apply. And that's, of course, from Quebectal apply. Count is four. 
four resources have to be created. And here you see as well, ah yes, go back to apply. It took uh, this amount of seconds and there is a couple of, there is some service uh, out, some output here. So it created, you can see here a service, uh, it created a deployment. Uh, you can see already he did quite a couple of things. That also means that if I go to my uh, Kubernetes uh, config in the real time uh, namespace, I'm still there by the way, you should see uh, that there's indeed something, in this case, a deployment real time app and a deployment called a Redis app. It's not important what they do, you just need to know that this corresponds to the real time YAML that is in my Git repo. I specified, go into the config folder. Well, this real time YAML deploys four resources, a deployment called Redis app, a deployment or a service called Redis app, a deployment called real time app, and a service called real time app. So four resources that were deployed. So what you have now seen is indeed that by uh, connecting up my cluster, which can run anywhere, right? It can be on my local machine for testing, it can be an on-premises cluster, it can be a cluster at the edge, it can be a cluster uh, at DigitalOcean, it doesn't matter where that cluster runs. I can connect that cluster up into the, the Azure Resource Manager uh, environment. I see the cluster, as you see here on the screen in front of you, uh, I see the cluster in the, in the portal, and then it allows me to do further configurations uh, on that. And in this case, configurations, they mean GitOps configurations. And I specify uh, through to a link to a Git repo what I want to deploy on those connected clusters. So that's basically how Azure Arc for Kubernetes uh, works. In another video following up on this one, I will also talk about how you can work with policies and basically deploy a, a GitOps policy on multiple clusters at a time. But that's for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.